Welcome back to Geology Info. Today, with the news of more lahars occurring at Mount Semeru in Indonesia, approximately 120 miles, 193 kilometers, west of Bali, on the island of East Java in Indonesia, hidden among the most fertile and densely populated slopes of the archipelago, rises Mount Semeru with its impressive 12,060 feet, 3,676 meters of altitude making it not only the highest point in Java, but also one of the most dangerous and active volcanoes on the planet. Known locally as Mahameru, which means the Great Mountain, this geological colossus is situated in the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire, a seismically explosive zone where earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur with alarming frequency. At this very moment, something extraordinary and deeply disturbing is unfolding on the slopes of this giant, transforming the valleys around it into devastating rivers of volcanic mud that threaten thousands of human lives. Mount Sumeru is located on the border between the districts of Lumajang and Malang in the province of East Java, forming part of the Tengger Volcanic Complex, an impressive mountain range that houses eight active volcanoes in its territory. Just three days after the violent eruption of November 19th, 2025, that launched ash clouds to more than 5 miles 8 kilometers of altitude and forced the evacuation of almost 1,000 people, a devastating secondary phenomena known as Lahar came roaring down the Besuk Kobukan River on November 22nd at 10.50 in the morning, transforming the valley into a river of destructive volcanic mud. This Lahar, triggered by the intense rains that characterize Indonesia's rainy season, represents one of the most insidious and deadly dangers associated with volcanic eruptions, as it mixes still hot pyroclastic material deposited on the slopes during the eruption with rainwater creating a liquid avalanche of mud, ash, rocks, and debris that descends at terrifying speeds of up to 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers per hour. Today's lahar traveled an impressive distance of 8 miles, 13 kilometers, from the eruption center to the Gladik Perak Bridge, which had been hit by ardent clouds just three days earlier, completely engulfing the structure in thick, dark gray smoke under pressure, accompanied by thundering sounds that echoed through the valley and ash falls that completely obscured visibility. The vibrations recorded on monitoring equipment reached an impressive maximum acceleration of 1.7 inches, 43 millimeters, forcing traffic between Malang and Lumajang to stop completely with vehicles waiting on both sides of the bridge until visibility returned to normal in the late afternoon. What makes this situation particularly alarming is that this was not an isolated event, but rather the second lahar in just two days, evidencing that the pyroclastic deposits accumulated on Sumeru's slopes and valleys are creating a secondary time bomb ready to be detonated with each rain that falls on the mountain. Mohamed Wafid, head of Indonesia's geological agency, warned in a virtual press conference on Thursday, November 20th, that the pyroclastic flow deposits currently filling the mountain's valleys could overflow, potentially spreading to the sides of the river channels, and that the material is not compacted, making it highly susceptible to erosion that can create new lahars at any moment. On the afternoon of November 19th, 2025, exactly at 2.13 in the afternoon, Mount Sumeru awakened with a fury not seen in years, initiating an explosive eruption that would launch volcanic material to stratospheric altitudes and trigger a cascade of events that still threaten the region weeks after the initial event. The eruption began with a series of explosions that produced devastating pyroclastic flows, superheated currents of gas and rock fragments that descended the southeastern slopes at speeds exceeding 62 miles per hour, 100 kilometers per hour, initially traveling 4.3 miles, 7 kilometers, before extending beyond 8 miles, 13 kilometers, from the summit in a matter of minutes. At 4 in the afternoon, the Center for Volcanology and Geological Disaster Mitigation raised the volcano's alert level from level 3 Siaga to level 4 Awas, the highest possible alert level in the Indonesian Volcanic Hazard Classification System, reflecting the extreme severity of the rapidly developing situation. Mukdas Sofian, officer at the Mount Semeru Observation Post, reported in a written document that pyroclastic flows were still occurring at the time the report was being prepared, with the runoff distance reaching up to 8 miles, 13 kilometers, from the summit and the eruption continuing with no signs of immediate deceleration. The eruption produced an ash column that rose an impressive 18,400 feet, 5,600 meters, above the summit, that is, 
more than 26,200 feet, 8,000 meters, above sea level, creating a dark gray cloud of thick intensity that headed north and northwest, depositing volcanic ash on several communities in the districts of Pronojiwo and Kandapuro. The seismic event was recorded with a maximum amplitude of 1.8 inches, 45 millimeters, and an extraordinary duration of 14,283 seconds, approximately four hours of continuous tremor that kept the population terrorized and scientists on maximum alert about the possibility of even more catastrophic events. Authorities established an exclusion zone of five miles, eight kilometers, around the crater and ordered the population to remain at least 1,640 feet, 500 meters, from the banks of the Besuk Koboken, Besuk Bang, Besuk Kambar, and Besuk Sat rivers, areas of extreme risk that can be affected by the expansion of hot clouds and lahar flows at any moment. Approximately 187 people, including climbers, porters, guides, and employees of Bromo Tengar Sameru National Park, were trapped in the Ranu Kumbolo camping area at 7,835 feet, 2,389 meters of altitude when the eruption began, creating an emergency situation that required a complex rescue operation coordinated between various government agencies. Fortunately, all were safely evacuated in the following hours, as Ranu Kumbolo is located on the north slope of the mountain, outside the main path of the pyroclastic flows that moved predominantly southeast-south, although the climbers may have been exposed to volcanic ash during the evacuation. The human impact of the eruption was significant and immediate, with three people suffering severe burns that required emergency hospitalization, including a couple from Kadiri who were passing through the Picket Knoll area when they were surprised by hot gases and ash. In addition to Husen, a resident of Supaturang village in Pranojiwo district, who woke up during the night and stepped on still hot ash that had fallen on his house. 1,156 people were displaced from their residences and sheltered in nine different locations, including schools, mosques, and community halls scattered throughout the affected districts, creating a humanitarian crisis that required immediate mobilization of emergency resources. 21 houses were severely damaged, 105 were moderately damaged, and 505.6 acres, 204.63 hectares, of agricultural land were destroyed by hot ash and pyroclastic flows, representing devastating economic losses for communities that depend on agriculture as their main means of subsistence. The road connecting the village of Sumbersari to the village of Gumukmas was completely covered by volcanic material, cutting vital access between communities and greatly hindering rescue and assistance efforts. Leave your like to support this scientific outreach work and share this video so that more people can learn about the silent threat that continues in the valleys of Mount Sumeru. Together, we can transform information into prevention and awareness, into preparation for the challenges that nature presents to us.